Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful, my God. You are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. God, you are wonderful, my Lord. You are excellent. God, you are so good. You are good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. My Lord, you are excellent. Dieu, tu es si bon. Dieu, tu es si gentil. Dieu, tu es excellent. Mon Dieu, tu es merveilleux. Dieu, tu es si bon. Dieu, tu es si gentil. Dieu, tu es excellent, mon Dieu, tu es merveilleux. Merveilleux est son nom, merveilleux est sa puissance. Dieu, tu es merveilleux, mon Dieu, tu es tout puissant. Excellent est son nom, excellent est sa puissance. Excellent est son nom, mon Dieu, tu es excellent. Lord, you are so good, you are good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord, you are excellent. Lord, you are so good, you are good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord. You are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord. You are excellent. Dieu, tu es merveilleux, mon Dieu, tu es excellent. God, you are wonderful, my Lord, you are excellent. Dieu, tu es si merveilleux, mon Dieu, tu es excellent. Excellent is your name. Is your name excellent? Is your power, Lord? You are wonderful, my Lord. You are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power, Lord. You are wonderful. My Lord, you are excellent. Greetings, everybody. Welcome once again. This is your favorite program, A Chapter a Day. And on here, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, we should or should not do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. Of course, you don't want to preach the gospel and become a castaway. You don't want to preach the gospel and then end up in the place where you depopulated while you were here on earth and then miss the place where you populated. Because as Christians, our operation is operation, depopulate hell and populate heaven. Yeah, you get the idea? That's the whole idea. So that's exactly what we are all about. And so you cannot do, you cannot afford to do that job and then end up in the wrong place. That would be so sad. That would be like totally and completely sad. We don't want that to happen to you. So, of course, that's why we get on every day studying the word of God, knowing what God has said concerning us in the scriptures, and we're living it. We're living our best life by living the word of God. When you become a living epistle, right of men, it becomes very beautiful. And the Bible becomes a, a life 
thing for you it's not just some storybook it becomes real it gets it becomes as real as it can get you know that's exactly what happens so guys let's get on with a chapter idea for today while we're doing all of this we also create a king james version audio bible where you can read and grow your faith the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god what are the best ways there right than to hear the word of god so of course we're getting on with a chapter a day for today and we also get to study the bible so we have bible study version so this comes like we have a chapter a day and on the chapter a day we have the bible party and after the bible party we pray for the bible people for the people who were born on that day and after that we get to study the word of god together we read the bible which is the creation of the audio bible and then we go ahead and study the word of god for that day like the name is a chapter a day, aka a card for short, right? So we study a chapter every single day. It doesn't matter how long or how short a chapter is. It's just one chapter a day. There are days where we've had three verses. There are days where we've had 176 verses, which was the longest ever. There are days when we have 80, 90. There are days when we have 20, 15, 8, 10. And like today, we have just 13 verses. So it varies but regardless of how long or how short a verse is how long how short a chapter is we'll do just one chapter every single day and that's why it's going to take us till 2024 because the entire bible has 1189 chapters and we're kind of missed a couple of days but yes regardless of that we're still going to end up in 2024 so yeah you can still be with us until then and we'll know what God will have for us after that. There are lots of things that have happened on the chapter a day. And we're done with that session. With whatever God wanted us to do. And then he gave us another assignment to do. And we added it to a chapter a day. When we started, we're not doing birthday party. When we started, I didn't even remember that you're supposed to usher God in and appreciate him at the end sometimes i used to remember like once in a while i'll just pray and then sometimes i couldn't remember but god made it a part and parcel of a chapter a day and today we're enjoying it we're loving it so far so i don't know about you but i believe that god really always has a purpose for us and if we're just connected and if we're in tuned like if we really want to hear him we really want to do stuff he's going to give us the grace and the energy to do it and he's going to make provisions for us to be able to do the things and do them perfectly right so that's god for you okay so let's get on with what we have for today we'll hand over the session to god first our bible party is taken from psalms 140 and he has 13 wow. verses are you ready ready or not here i come father we thank you for this day that you made i'm we thank you for this day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your faithfulness, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you for all that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives. Because in everything, you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose. Lord, we bless your holy name, O oh God. We magnify you. We give you all the praise, all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. There is none like you in all the earth. You're the faithful father. You're the I am that I am. You're the beginning and the end. You're the first and the last you're the god of wonders beyond our galaxy lord we give you all the praise we give you all the glory we give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it blessed be your holy name in all the earth O father we pray O god that as we come for a chapter a day today O god that our expectations shall not be cut short that our expectations because we have expectations and great ones are that there's going to be manifestation because expectations birth manifestations while we get on you with faith we trust you will believe in you oh god because we've never come to dine and sup at your table and we've gone back the same lord we pray oh god that you're going to speak to us in a very special way like you would speak to your children so lord we are grateful let you increase while i decrease so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen felt heard and experienced throughout this edition of a chapter a day no one else nothing else lord give us a mouth of a learner to speak a word in season to the hearts that are weary and waiting and expectant lord take preeminence take all the glory lord let your will and your will alone be done jesus christ will be the focus and the center of all that we're doing here today Thank you, Lord God, for hearing and answering us. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say, Jainomus, Amen, Amen, and Amen. So let's do the birthday thingy, people. 
We're getting on with the birthday party. The birthday party. Okay, the first person on our birthday list is Mom Colette Loom. Happy birthday to you, Mom Colette Loom. God bless you. Enlarge your coast and do marvelous for you. This woman calls me my, 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 my American voice girl. I don't know why she calls me like that, but it's so funny. Like, um, I've done a couple of stuff with her. She always... Um, Sources me to give her some information. She gets to ask questions. She does a box pop sometimes. She's a great talk show host. She's a great journalist. She's also a great editor. I mean, like, you know, so she has her own uh, media institution right now. I'm sure she'll be able to put it on um, in the comment section when she gets to see this video so that people can go follow and enjoy her work She does a lot of great jobs and of course she always handles and tackles issues that People kind of shun away and people really have no idea about so she brings them to the light and then we have a conversation around it I think she had actually brought me on one of those her programs on her Facebook page She had brought me on one of those programs some time back I can't remember exactly and she has been bringing amazing people on that platform so please go on there and get to learn she's also an amazing mother an amazing friend an amazing sister an amazing wife as well she also does a whole lot and she has a Facebook page um, I forgot the name of the Facebook page I have a lot of friends who have pages so <laughs> Forgive me for forgetting the name, but like I said, when she sees this video, she's definitely going to put everything in the comment section. And so you can go right on there and follow her and get to learn and get to grow. Like I said, I'm not going to be introducing you guys to people that cannot do anything for you or people that cannot uh, make you learn or grow or be better, right? I'll not be introducing you guys to such people. You all know me. You know me that I'm better than that, right? Okay, so let's get on. The next person is Mr. Matt Easy. Mr. Matt Easy, I got to know him when I was in Nigeria. Did we finally meet physically? I'm not sure. We're supposed to, but we ended up not meeting. Um, he's one amazing person. He loves singing as well, and he loves doing great stuff on social media. Thank you so much for being an amazing friend. I really appreciate it. He's one of those persons who gets to encourage me always 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 on the things i do and he gets to support me as much as he can whenever he can the next person is mom candy jong mom candy jong is actually a cousin to my dad yeah she can sing for the world this girl can sing like there's no tomorrow oh my god and she can bring heaven down with her voice she has a great voice happy birthday to you sis god bless you the next person is Mr. Charles Bentulonji Nabish. Mr. Charles Bentulonji Nabish, I got to know him on Facebook. And uh, the first thing he said to me when he ever spoke to me was, I'm so proud of you because it's rare to see young people who love God and they go all out to talk about God without feeling remorseful, without feeling afraid, without feeling ashamed, without feeling shy. Well, I was elated. Coming from a man of God on fire like himself, coming from a man who does a lot of great things, social media, off and online. I mean, I was really taken aback, but I was very excited. But to, to, to say the least, I wasn't like that before. I was one of those kinds of persons he was describing that he's happy that I'm not. I used to be that kind of person until God actually just took over. Like God just took over and say, you you got to work for me, girl. Like, you know, like that. I used to be shy. I used to be afraid. I used to be embarrassed. Because the way some of these people of the world, the way they will make you feel like, it will be like you're dumb, you're daft, or you're stupid. Like, some of my friends used to say things like, Princess, you were so smart. I don't understand. How could you be so deceived by these people? Which people? The Holy Spirit. I had an encounter with God. The Holy Spirit took over. And you're making me feel like I'm supposed to be the stupid one here. I know. You hear? Mom Tipa Mavis is screaming in the comment section. You shy? Yes. Hmm. I used to be so shy. I used to be so embarrassed. Like, I just cannot talk about God. It's not normal. I used to so want to hide everything I do about God. Like, you know where you're coming from that place where you were in the world, like in the world full time. It's not like I was in the world joking time. I was in the world full time. So coming now to Christ, it feels like 
Well, it feels weird for people who have been in the world before coming to Christ. It feels weird. So it's like, how am I supposed to now start telling these people that I've joined that thing that we used to sit together and laugh about? I have become one of those persons that we used to make fun of. Like, how am I supposed to tell my friends, you get? So I was always feeling embarrassed. I was always on edge. Like, I don't want to say something or do something that would, that would make me represent those people I used to laugh at. That was the problem. So it was crazy. So when he said that thing to me, I was very excited and I was very happy. And I was like, oh, thank you, Lord, that right now I don't look like, I don't, appear i don't come out like that shy person who was afraid who didn't want to talk about god it says if you're not proud of me before people i'll not be proud of you before my father you get that's how jesus said it so i'm happy that people can be able to see the father through me and see that i've become a better person than i used to be i used to be so shy <laughs> right they feel love you eh? and don't take it hey tell me about it for the first seasons when some of them started knowing that i become a christian i become a child of god it was not for you ha it was not funny at some point my dad told me that i have to make a choice because i cannot still have those set of friends considering the fact that they don't even believe in what i believe in the next thing i will realize is that i've gone back that if i don't get to separate myself from those people i'll go back and i knew it was the, it was the truth you know sometimes you need to accept the truth it hurts but you need to accept and you need to take a step because it's up to you the choice is yours regardless of how you feel or what you want you know that there are just some people that if you get to continuously be around them you will lose whatever you're holding dear oh yeah if you guys are not going the same route you're not going to the same place your destination is not the same you would lose what you have if you're on the wrong track so thank you so much uh man of god on fire Mr. Charles Lontu Nabish, Longi Nabish Bentu. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. He loves God. He's, he goes all out and do a lot of great things for the kingdom. I just admire it so much. And of course, he's also a young person who loves God and is doing things for God and is unashamed. We're unapologetic. We're unashamed. And we're doing it now. We are Jesus freaks. We don't care. We are Jesus people. We don't care. Unapologetically a baby girl of Jesus. I don't freaking care. If you don't like it, bounce. I'm not sorry that I'm fully a child of God. I'm not sorry that I will talk Jesus morning, noon, and night. I'm not sorry that I will talk Jesus on my page as much as I want. Mm-hmm people want the journalist in me this journalist is talking god i'm doing the journalist the christian journalist part of it so begin to love the christian journalist in me if you're waiting for the carnal journalist in me it might never happen no god might choose to put me there but right now he's using the christian journalist in me hmm? <laughs> the news journalist and the other kinds of journalists has not been activated they're still dormant so let's just use the jesus one <laughs> If you don't like it, jump over and clip my sister. I seen Hawk Electric Cable. I don't even know what you want to do. Go and walk high tension. But me, I'm not sorry that I'm a child of God. And I'm not going to apologize to anybody. If you don't like it, you're an adult. Let's behave like adults. Unfriend me or unfollow me. Simple, simple. Not be by force. This one is by purpose. We're not following and unfollowing people by choice. We're following and unfollowing by purpose. <laughs> when you know play the go. You know the kind of people to leave around you because you don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> Mom Mavis says, call me out of them. Be separate. Apostle, not be foolish. <laughs> you know, be foolish, my sister, for talk that kind of thing. He says, he says hmm. I mean, they really laughed at me. People made fun of me. The worst one was when I said I was going to do um, baptism because they just did me sprinkle when I was still a baby. I was not even older. I was still a baby. They did me the sprinkle thing that they'd already baptized me. So when I read the Bible and I understood some things and the Bible says, believe and then be baptized. I was wondering like, as a baby, what was I believing in? What did I even know? Who told me what? But now that I've gotten an understanding of what this is all about, I have now believed I can get baptized. That's me re, re, um, how they say realigning and publicly saying that yes i am joined with christ and of course it's by burial you say it's burial and resurrection right so they said the mosaic kind of baptism was the children of israel in between the red sea 
so there was they were totally and completely immersed in water because the firmament of the heavens is made with water that's why we get rain sometimes right and then the two sides of the of the thing so they were totally buried that was kind of their own baptism then if you even jesus himself was baptized by immersion so who is your perfect example like where do you want to take your example for immersion is burial my dad always say things like this that can you actually bury someone by just sprinkling sand on them you said go run that quarter or you go run your ass you run leave ass because when that thing decays they smell it you know go be na year small normal rats and all these small small insects or animals home animals that live in the houses and stuff like that when they die and you can't find them it's not funny i say it is not funny so uh, <laughs> so as now so when they say burial they say burial and resurrection you are identifying with the burial and resurrection of christ if you go bury thy body it's okay you just go put the thy body on top ground then just sprinkle ground on top they dig and dig so deep and bury anyways me i read the bible and i saw the importance of it and i had to do it because i knew that they had not done it ever whatever they did to me was not considered baptism to me and it wasn't even done right in the first place Mount Tipper Mervis says that baptism party, eh? hmm. the Godhead probably came together for my case. <laughs> <coughs> I say my friends laughed at me until it. Eh? <clears throat> the thing is, sometimes when they used to preach things in church, I'm always this Berean Christian kind of person. So when they preach some things in church, I go and check it in the Bible and hear what the Bible says about it. I look for a scripture. If you give me anything and just give me a scripture back in there, you've already caught me. If there's anything that you want me to do or say, you give me a scripture back and just know that I'm on it. I am on it. Because sometimes even when God gives me assignments, I always ask him the scripture back in for it all. So even in my stupidity, I know I have backing. I know that God told me. I know that this is what he gave me as a blueprint for why he's telling me to do this thing the way I'm doing it. Oh, he always does. He always gives me. So I'm sure I'm secure for that one. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Charles Bentulongi. And then the next person on our birthday list is Metro Piero. Metro Piero, I got to know him as well on Facebook. I've not seen him physically before, but I got to know him on Facebook and we became very good friends. He's a very, very amazing, interesting person. We met on a mutual friends post and we just became good friends like that. Like I told you guys, I had a new, I had to re strategize the way I add people to my friends list and the way I go looking for people that I want to be around me, that I want to be in my circle like that. So I'm always in the comment section, getting people's perspective, new ideas, new ways of looking at things to broaden my horizon and broaden my scope of thought. So people like Metro Piero actually intrigued me on the mutual friends post with his comments and the way he replies to stuff and the way he sees stuff. For the most part, most people that I get to add in my circle are people that see things like me. They understand things like me. They love God. They know that, oh, this is how this thing is supposed to be. And Mam Tiba Mavi says, my pastor opened scripture lecture here and there. I still refuse. I said I need to get the conviction personally. My strong head eh? <laughs> My sister, the strong head is good sometimes. So because when you don't get personally convicted, you just do these things like the normal things. It really doesn't stick. It really doesn't get with you. That I always love personal conviction. Most times when people ask me, because when I was in the world, I was doing a lot of things that I don't do now. Like some of them just fell off automatically some of them some of them it took a while but god was always like on with it for me so sometimes i'll just ask god i'm like lord this thing is so complicated for me i don't really get it can you just tell me why i need to do it when god tells me the why i need to do it it's just simple i mean it's a flip of the finger or the blink of an eye i'm done I need to debate them. I need to dispute our no man. You like you laugh or you like it funny you go rich for sale. That one is your own. You're on your own. Ha. At some point, I used to struggle to explain myself. The Holy Spirit said, no, stress yourself. There are some people who already have a perception. You cannot change that perception by whatever you say. So just leave them. No waste your energy. You say energy do better thing. This one, they will not agree. Whatever they have perceived and they have had in their hearts, that that's what it is. That's what they will stick to. 
So now that's the one that God has been teaching me eh, for about two years now. Majority of the times when there's a conflict or when somebody is saying something against me or when somebody is saying something about me that is not true, God says you are not going to defend yourself. You're not going to do nothing. Just leave at you. There's nothing you will say that will unconvince that person. So just leave them. When it's people that still need to learn or people that don't have some kind of understanding, then he will tell me, go ahead and talk. So I would have to explain to those people. There are people that are ready to learn, ready to change, ready to see things in the way that God wants them to see it. Because sometimes we see things in our way. Maybe it's the environment we grew up from, the things that they've let us to get away with. So we kind of feel like some of these things are correct. I remember talking today at... Um, Somebody asked the question, is it okay for wives and husbands to both together watch porn so that they can um, better their sexual life or something? And then she asked if it's okay to, what is sex text or something like that? I don't know, something like that. People are in distant relationships. Married people, oh, she emphasized that married people because some people would have just taken it out of context. I came and told her that me, to me is wrong. And the one thing about the sex text thing even, some people gave other reasons, but my own reason was this. All the times that I've seen in the Bible, in this our generation, we feel like that thing is okay. Humanly speaking, it feels like it's okay. But it is not okay. Every single person that we saw getting married in the Bible stayed with their husbands. A man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one. We never had anywhere where I need to struggle and travel abroad. Let me go and find money. That's where trouble starts. Oh. It begins from there. Even God himself was telling the people that don't fast for a long time so that you don't put your spouse in trouble. You guys are still together. Oh. We're not two when are day together. God is saying that it's not good for you to take some kind of long fast. You is married. It's not good for you to take some kind of long fast so that you don't put your spouse in temptation. Wuna see they together. Then you think it's the one that you leave the person and travel and go you to your different place where you don't can light the fire. <laughs> Jesus. I seen. I'm not condoning that some people finally fell or they finally made a mistake or their hormones got the best of them. But you don't come and light fire and then you come out go. They make different man, they put fire, who fire, who fire, who they fire, they catch. You think, what are you thinking? Those are some things that we do. Those things are not wrong in themselves. For go hustle is not wrong. But no, if you are married, eh, there are some sacrifices you have to make. You know, your own hustle will not go be now abroad. If you people are not going together, no go. And we're wondering why the family unit is getting distorted the way it's distorted. <laughs> we all go be okay. I beg God, though. Me, I'm begging God with all of my heart. The, some of us, because you're married, oh, maybe you're a speaker, maybe you're a minister of the gospel, you're a singer. They invite you. They're not invited. You're not going along with your husband. Una go only be so. That ministration no will happen. If it's not God who tells me, because God is not even okay with you doing those things maybe if it's one day or two days understandable but you know some people just go and they're living there permanently you're there she's here ah she's there you're here now she's think that you guys should not have just gotten married in the first place now it says leave and cleave do we understand the definition of cleave Someone say, hey, so what do you mean you mean that we should not hustle no there is some kind of hustle that you will go to God and go and show God what he has written in the Bible and then he will bring things forth for you. But because we just see it as a normal thing, so we don't even pray about it. We don't even pray about it. We don't even bother to ask God like, God, you said in your word that I should leave and cleave. But this is the scenario now. It looks like I have to travel abroad to go and hustle for my wife. Can you not make a way for both of us to go? Or can you not make a way for us to prosper here? Begin to tell God those things. My sister, Asine, so I'm going to say 100 days fast. <clears throat> I'm telling you. And by the time the man, the woman was done, the man had already got inside her. I seen it's not funny. It's not funny. They always say this thing that the first yes is not easy, but the second yes is very easy. Which meant if you have been resisting the sex, resisting, resisting, and resisting, when you finally give in the first time, boom, the second time they're not gonna ask you plenty of time. Now you go instead go the hustle self. 
because your body has gotten used to it and is ready for it as for the porn thing it's just crazy because when you both watch it the bible says think on these things things that are honest things that are true those pictures will remain in your head because you're a graphic human being that's how god created you so there are times that even your spouse will not be there and those pictures will be flashing in your mind and you know funny People are struggling to get out. You want to carry your wife and go and put there. And then some of these things, these people have practiced. They've taken their times and practiced before they're doing all those nonsense styles that they're doing or whatever crazy styles that they're doing there. You come now, your poor wife or your poor husband, he cannot understand those things. He no fee ever try to do that kind of style. You now start saying your husband is boring. Comparing your, your, your husband to somebody who is doing a job, a professional who is doing their job. Yeah. <clears throat> Hey Jesus, help us. And see, eh, when God says something is not good, it's not good. It doesn't matter who it, who it is for. He says, May you know fast, so long fast when you are married because you don't want to put your spouse in trouble. Even God knows that there's a possibility of your spouse getting in trouble. Who be you? Ask something about being strong, physical strength. And then sleeping in the last of her halot. Ask him, he'll tell you the story. You and I will now get correct discussion. Like some of us will feel we're too strong. Now me who almost got raped because I was feeling that I was too strong. No man no strong. Oh. <laughs> I beg. Let's just not be joking around because eh, we don't want to get in trouble. Anyways, that's by the way. So, yes, I know the kind of people that I live around my space. I know the kind of people that I do what kind of thing with. And so thank you, Metro Perio, for being an amazing person, for being there and supporting my stuff, and for all the great stuff that you also do for the world and the people around you. God bless you. The last but not the least is Mr. David Mancho. I got to know the, Mr. David Mancho when I was in, like, kind of like high school we lived in the same area together he was selling this lady stuff and i used to go around and buy some stuff for myself as well so that's how i got to know him um i was his customer and he was a very good 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 seller like whatever he was selling was really good his stuff were really good and i used to buy a lot of stuff from him happy birthday to you mr david mancho so let's take that again happy birthday ma'am colette loom god bless you happy birthday mr matt easy Happy birthday, Mom Kandin Jong. Happy birthday, uh, Man of God on Fire, Mr. Charles Bento Lunji Nabish. Happy birthday, Metro Piero. Happy birthday, uh, Mr. David Mancho. So happy birthday to all these people. And it's about time. We get to pray for all the birthday people. We're not praying only for those of you who have just called your name. We're praying for every single person who is born today. Yes, you. Even you who is getting born right now. This is supposed to mean that five years to come, if Christ tarries to come, You'll be watching this video so you know I'm talking to you. Yes, you who is just getting born right now, this minute. Or oh, those of you who are going to be born before it's 12 midnight. Yes, I'm talking to all of you as well. And those who are already here. The older ones. And the younger ones who cannot um, listen, who cannot hear me right now. When you grow older, you're definitely going to see this. So I'm praying for every single person who is born today. So don't get it twisted. It is for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who were born today, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that you open the windows of heaven and pour out the choices of your blessings upon their lives. Rebuke every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as these blessings encompass them as a shield round about, let no weapon formed or fashion against them prosper. Every tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you cause them to be trailblazers, pay setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them all that it takes to go and conquer their world. Let them be a blessing in their generation and and beyond father i pray oh god that people come in contact with them because of the overflow of the blessings will literally rub off of the blessings from their lives in the mighty name of jesus they will literally be blessed as they come in contact with them in the mighty name of jesus father i pray oh god that you cause them to increase in wisdom and stature again in favor before god and before men let their gifts make a way for them Causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Let your light so shine upon their lives that people will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father, I pray, O oh God, as they go on fulfilling their purpose, they might get to a place where they feel overwhelmed. They feel like they want to give up or back out. They'll hear a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way, walk that we need. They will not derail, they will not stray apart. And for that, 
all glory be given unto your holy name. The people are going to be excited. The people are going to be happy. The people are going to be jubilating, oh God, because of all that you do. Lord, let your path keep shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Let your word be a lamb unto their feet and a light to their part. Father, I decree and declare, O oh God, that you're going to teach them, O oh God, how to not only get to the top, but to get to the top and stay there permanently. You're the master strategies. So all the techniques and strategies that you get to use for these people, O oh Lord, we know that it's going to work and it's going to be perfect. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to teach them to stand out and not fit in. As they are fulfilling purpose and being the place where you created them to be, they will definitely stand out and not fit in. Lord, I pray that you open the windows of heaven and bless them tremendously, O oh God. Before they call you, answer. Before the crowd, you hear. Because you said in your word, call on me and I'll answer thee and surely great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Lord, let that be a practical reality for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best version and you divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress. Lord, open doors for them that no man can shut. And shut every door that is not of you in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. You said their door, an effectual door is open for them. But there are many adversaries. Lord, go ahead and deal with all the adversaries. So that they will march in gallantly and enter into these doors and enjoy all the blessings that ever are, O oh God, meant and purposed for them. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to do marvelous things in their lives. You're going to bless them. That people are going to see your good works in them, around them, for them, with them. And they will magnify the Lord. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to teach them how to be able to overcome all that they will go through, O oh God. Father, that they will not give up. They will not back out. They will stay on course and hold on till the end. Lord, that the crown that you've given to them They'll hold on to it so fervently and so strongly that nobody is going to be able to take it away from them. Lord, open their eyes to see those they are supposed to be destined to help us to and help them so that they'll strategically position themselves to help these people when the time is right and always. And you also strategically position their destiny to help us all around them. So when they also cry for help, help is going to just be on the way. Instant they're going to get help available to them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Ancients of Days, because you're the mighty man in battle. You're the awesome ruler. You're the Gentile Redeemer. Lord, perfect all that consents them and give them a sounds 126 state. A state of continuous laughter, singing, jubilating, rejoicing, dancing, and all good things that can be. Lord, this is going to be their best birthday yet. If you tarry to come, they'll be here same time next year, testifying of all the awesome sauce things that you've done in their lives. Lord, we are grateful. As you open these beautiful pages of their lives, Lord, write awesome stories that will wow anyone who gets to come in contact with them. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering us. We seal all these prayer requests with the blood of Jesus. And we say a ginormous amen and thank you because we know it is done, signed, sealed, and settled. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints say amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And of course, you know that I always like to sing, right? I like to do differently. So let's get to sing the amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. I say I prayed. Amen. Let it be in the love, so the prayers, amen, 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 with the blood of Jesus, amen, let it be so, amen, in their lives, as we pray, let it be so, amen, 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 in their lives, amen, as we have prayed, amen, let it be in their lives, come on, come on, amen, let it be in their lives. God bless you all tremendously. May you fill your bands with all good things and enlarge your coast. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Have a blast. Happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday to you. Joyeux anniversaire à tout le monde. Je vous aime avec tout mon cœur. 
Welcome, 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 ma'am, love, Angela. Yeah, she's on the go, on the move, and she's enjoying the program. Wait, oh, we need to Google and search if there is ever a day that someone is not born or dies. I doubt it. Me and wait, I doubt if there's never a day that somebody will not. Um, I, I, I heard of something that they said. They're trying to give the um, number of seconds which it takes for the next person to be born. Like in how many seconds a number of people are born. Something like that. They said the calculation. I think every day. And then some um, documentary that they were talking about this near death experience or something. And then they, they said the number of people that die in one in in a couple of minutes i think they they gave that thing per minute or per second i can't remember exactly in in just few seconds there are people dying and stuff oh yeah somebody was giving their near-death experience that you saw how hell was just getting filled up pop, 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 pop. people were just dropping like it was so fast and too many people were just coming to hell his heart was breaking and everything he had this near-death experience stuff so that's what happened to him so i remember yes it was someone who was giving their near-death experience and they said it was so bad that they, when they came here, they were just on fire for God. Like they had to depopulate hell by all means. And they had to preach the gospel like they had never, like crazy, like their lives depended on it. Sometimes when we have those experiences, our view, our way of talking God and doing God would definitely change for real. I believe so. <laughs> okay, Psalm 140 today, guys. Let's get this Bible party started i'm so excited it has 13 verses quite short so let's go psalm 140 deliver me O lord from the evil man preserve me from the violent man which imagine mischiefs in their heart continually are they gathered together for war they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent others poison is under their lips Seller, keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set jeans for me. Seller, I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Selah. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire unto deep pits that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall haunt the valiant man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. This is the word of the Lord and all the saints shall say a ginormous thanks be to god let's go people what did you learn what did you learn what did you learn says then god must be very busy judging people and yet has time to answer on everybody's prayer wow amazing god the omniscient god my sister see i told you guys right that i watched one movie where this guy was grumbling and grumbling and grumbling why god is not answering his prayers it was actually an indian movie like he was grumbling and grumbling and grumbling why god does not answer his prayers and then because he had this friend he liked the friend's sister but it looks like the friend's sister was not really interested in him per se he he had nothing he was not very wealthy so you know he could not really talk to the girl and all that kind of thing so he was really bothered about it that was what really bothered him more the main bother that he had the main worry that he had why he could not get that girl and so he got so angry and then he was like he wish he was god even if it's just for a day he would enjoy hmm so it's basically according to the film god granted him his wish he was god for one day <laughs> the man just made like that first at first it wasn't so much 
before when he just became god it was so sweet like he had already remembered about the girl and everything and everything and he had given that that wish and so the the, the wishes the prayer started coming slowly so he could handle it when it was coming slowly at some point it eh, just started sounding like bees were in his ear <laughs> It was so bad that he got to a place and just said, let everybody's wish be granted. Boom. See, come and see chaos in the world. Come and see chaos in the world. But he had his wish, right? Because his wish was to be with that girl. So he was on the moon having a great time. I mean, like he was just doing some lovey-dovey things. Him and the girl, they were dancing and enjoying it. Eh? That way, look well, eh? Easy to eat apple. Um, people who were in prison who were saying that they wanted to come out they were wishing so basically wishes were even some wishes were basically like prayers so he said let everybody's wish be answered let everybody's wish be given them so people in prison who were wishing to get out people who were wanting to kill other people people who were wanting to bomb countries my god the chaos that was on earth he was in, he was on the moon somewhere in the moon he had built some kind of nice palacey kind of place and he was getting married to the girl that he loved hey <laughs> god hey god hey hmm. i said god the young god the young girl for handed so honestly speaking if i was god i would not wipe the earth wipe myself self joy like seriously so sometimes that's what happens to us we feel like oh like God's work is just simple. Is he not just there sitting and answering prayers and then, you know, doing, sending wishes and stuff? Hmm. They say he never sleeps nor slumber. Do you know what that means? Sometimes when I don't sleep here, there are days that I used to be, I mean, crazily addicted to movies. And the worst part, I had to start running away from watching series because when you start watching the series, the tendency is that the next thing you want to do is you just want to finish. You'll be like, oh, let me just watch this one last episode. And then you watch it. It'll give you in a suspension point. You'll just be like, let me watch them. By the time you want to notice, it's already the next day. Like you've watched and then it's the next day. So that's what used to happen to me. So I started running away from series. I used to be that addicted to movies so much so that I could watch movies and sleep in 24 hours for just one hour because the following day I had to go to work, right? So I have to like maybe rest my head a little bit. So I'm supposed to get up like maybe 6 or 6.30 and I'm watching movies till like 5 a.m., sometimes 5.30. Sometimes I basically just put my head on the bed and then boom, I'm waking up for because my system is already used to waking up at that time because I have to go to work. So what I sleep for 15 minutes or for 30 minutes, I will wake up. My system will wake me up at the time that I'm supposed to wake up for work. That's the only interesting thing. That's the only nice thing about it. Because imagine me sleeping over time and then I don't go to work <laughs> because I was watching a movie. Can you imagine? That's how addicted I was to movies. So it was crazy. So I had to stop watching Siri. If I see a movie, no matter how nice it is, if it's a Siri, I need to do me. I know they me that run out. Sometimes do I still fall? Yes, I get tempted and I get some and I get into that trouble. That same trouble. But you know, it's just like, oh my God, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. So that's how it is. You know, like, God, God looks at us sometimes and I'm just like, I don't sleep for 24 hours. My whole day is like a, I'm droopy. It's like I could be walking and sleeping because I don't sleep for <laughs> for the number number of hours that I was supposed to sleep. Then they say God never sleeps nor slumber because he's looking out for us always. His eyes on the sparrow and he's watching us. Are you joking right now? Like, you got to be kidding me to think this kind of God is not the God you want to serve. Like, you ain't serious. You don't know what you're missing. Me? Hmm. Says... Uh, Mom Love says, I've learned that I must call you and that I must pray you and that God answers So Of course he does, woman of God. He really does. And Mom Triple Mavis says, Bridge is a good series in husband and wife series. Oh yeah, I've been watching that one. Hmm. Woman of God, share. And that one also, I actually did that same kind of thing that I normally do with series. The thing is just that, the thing about series is that, you have this urge to want to just watch the next and watch the next. Now I'm at husband and wife's. I'm on husband and wife series. I've watched from episode one to where we are right now, and I started watching it. But when um, they were showing this 
other one where they were doing it's my spouse it's my spouse something like that where there was this woman that the husband was just becoming something else and unbecoming and then finally i think he slept with the with the best friend the woman's best friend and they were there playing behind her back and doing all things and she was just like a fool i think the man actually died at the end of that particular series that particular husband and wife series i think that one the title was it's my spouse something like that that's where I started, I, I knew about husband and wife series. So I went backwards and when I started watching from the start, um, my enemy's keeper or this thing in the, in the prison, something, something like that. I started watching from square one. See my sister, there were some days I would sleep for the one hour like that because I was watching husband and wife series. It's not a good thing, but that's how much series can have an effect on me. So I always try to run away from it, but I watched it until. Thank God that I'm now at the same pace with them. Even though sometimes I go back and just rewatch some of them to just learn a particular lesson or something, something, something like that. Husband and Wife series is a very good series, especially for Christians. Whether you're married or you're not married, it's very good for you. So please go and watch it. It's on Ayobami Agboyega Film Channel, something like that. Just go and type it, you'll see. Husband and wife series, Ayoba means, I don't know whether I'm pronouncing the other name right. But when you type it like that, it's going to appear. Okay, so let's go. Guys, welcome Mr. Samuel Yakubu Garba. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Let's do this. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Of course, we have to cry out to God. There are lots of people out there who don't just like us. Like they are evil people and they are bent on doing us evil. Remember those people who were ready to do Paul any kind of thing? They were about to fast for 40 days and nights just to kill Paul. <laughs> there are people around that are like that. So you need to cry out to God to deliver you from these people. Yeah, he has to deliver you because some of them are like that. You don't even know. If someone did not come and tell Paul, we would not have even known that there were some people that were ganging up to do that kind of thing. But you know, God always delivers us. And that was deliverance for Paul. By him hearing that this is what these people were planning. And then they had to pass him through some place, some place, some place like that. And then he, he left. He left that place. See what some people... So, it's some people's purpose. So, to fulfill the negative parts of scripture, it's some people's purpose. They will fulfill it. But I've always prayed and, and told God, Lord, minus me, I will fulfill only the good and the sweet parts of the scripture. Because somebody had to betray Jesus. It was not ordained from the start that it was going to be Judas. So Judas just made himself available along the line. So, the love of many who was cold. It has not been preordained or predestined that it's you that your love was cold. Though. Now you go, let like, make yourself available. Oh yeah. And that's why you examine yourself daily. So that if you see that your love is waxing cold, you catch yourself and come back. Papa, I'm sorry. I am very sorry. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Holy Spirit can go see. See, I say go tell you secret. So you say go shock. Like sometimes you used to say some things and then by the time I see it unfolding, I'm like, Chai, Holy Spirit. You said now, wow. I see, now so you did shock. Now, so you did your experience Psalms 126 were like they that dreamt. You did look something, so you'd be like, This is so surreal. When the Lord has already told you in the secret place, they come out, sign, and something that just happened. Things are just falling in place. Hey, my God and Father. My Father, my Father. <laughs> hey, God is too much, oh. God is too much. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. <laughs> He says you can't even pronounce the names. Yes, I can't even pronounce the names very well. But I know that there's an Ayoba me there. But if you just go and type husband and wife series on YouTube, it's just them. They're the ones doing husband and wife series. So, guys, we have to call on God to preserve us. We have to call on God to keep us, to save us from these enemies. There are some enemies who don't even know that they are our enemies. You see how the Pharisees and Sadducees were walking amongst all the people who were following Jesus, you would think, oh my God, Jesus carried a crowd. In that crowd, there were people who didn't like him and they were waiting for his downfall. So you might see people coming to you and smiling and saying, oh, you're doing well. God bless you. God bless you. No be all, oh. They talk the God bless you from the heart. They are waiting to be the radio one battery. 
that will go and say, ah, I knew this girl. I knew she's fake. Oh my God, who is doing what on my phone? Oh no. Oh no. People, I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. I'm so sorry that happened. You know, so we'll call on and we'll scream out and we'll cry out and nothing is happening. But there are people that, were, as we're just doing our purpose, we're just fulfilling our purpose. The people are there planning to deal with us. They're planning that we should fail. Some people might even be praying the prayer that we should fail. Unfortunately for them, God does not answer that kind of prayer. Because if God was just answering any kind of prayer, eh, hmm. Some of you, if we don't, I don't know play for day by now. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people don't know that we're on a chapter a day right now. I don't know why they don't remember. Most people don't just get to remember, or sometimes they forget. Like just like me too. Sometimes I get mixed up with the timing. I'm trying to call somebody in in Pei, and then I'm calling at the wrong time because in my mind I'm using my Thailand time to call them, forgetting that no, they are like we're like six hours ahead of them. You know, like that. That's what gets to happen. Okay. And it says, which imagine mischiefs in their heart continually are they gathered together for war? See, the truth is, we know that these people are going to gather. The Bible says somewhere that they shall surely gather, but if they don't gather for your sake, they'll fall. So God has already assured us that these people will gather. So our prayer should not be at the part of, Lord, let them not gather. Let them, they will gather. It is a sure thing. It is certain that they will gather. Those people for their 40 days and 40 nights against Paul, they gathered. They were allowed to, they are allowed to gather. But if the gathering is not for your sake, that's when the falling will happen. Lord, shower them. I say shower them with small, small fire. As long as they are not gathering for me, show them Pepe. Let them see Manyaka. As in, hey, hey, Lord. Oh. Sometimes those people have to see those things oh, because some people have made up their minds that they, they will go then for that hair fire quiet, quiet. So no, because they have made up their mind now, they will also enjoy what hair fire people enjoy, even here on earth. Yeah. The good thing is their falling is guaranteed. So you, you know that your victory is sure because God has said so. They will surely gather. He will allow them to gather. All that they imagine is only wicked things, evil things. Some people do I mean, they don't just have no nice imagination at all. I don't know why. Like, it's hard to think evil, though. It's stressful. I mean, when people used to hurt me and I'm planning to deal with them. Now, walk, oh. It is work, enough work. <laughs> Nobody play, play, you know. Hey. <laughs> oh, people think to do evil is easy. No, it's you. So God is giving you the easy way out by not just planning evil and thinking on good things. You only fuck say, fuck say. You won't plan evil. You won't do vengeance. Vengeance is the Lord, my brother, my sister. Hand up for God. And he will do it better than you. Because they are small nursery school vengeance, so he won't do it. It work. It will affect yourself. But God does the grand chef vengeance. When you say, say look at you, you say, hey, God, you did a good job. <laughs> I said, me, I used to pray sometimes and pray that God should deal with people. Eh? And then I look at the people then again. Eh? The way they are alive, they are sorry. Then me, na, na me says, I go, go back go shout for God. Oh. Papa got her back. Tender justice will mercy you. Tender justice will mercy you. I understand that the person be vexed me, but eh, I don't look sorry against me. Just tender justice will mercy Now me says, I go back back. Because oh. I know to go for you. God says, I will give nations for your sakes. In a joke. Oh. In a joke. Like we saw what he was doing for the children of Israel. Until he set ambush. When he wants to provide for them, he does it grand style. People that they come out, go for battle. Dress like say that they're going for a wedding feast. Who does that? Carry all your jewelry, then go for battle fee. Nobody be crazy with that. But only God can do those kinds of things. Too. Hey. It says, Mom Love Angela says, I'm wondering if verse 5... Are you kidding me? I'm wondering if verse 5 refers to a human man grateful for correction for the righteous. What do you think, princess? Let me get to that one and see what it says. 
Oh my. Okay, this is... Where was I? Outside verse 2. We're coming there. Where is verse 5? Let me check it out. The proud hide a snare for me and cords. They are spread a net by the wayside. They have set jeans for me. That's verse 5, right? I'm wondering if verse 5 is there refers to a humble man grateful for correction from the righteous wait oh that's verse 5 yes you're wondering if it's correction from the righteous maybe I need to get it um, on. Maybe you rephrase the question that you're asking me. I don't, I don't, because I don't understand it. Oh yeah, so um, I wanted to say something about this verse three. So there's something that it says. It says they have sharpened their tongue like a serpent. Others, others' poison is under their lips. See. You see me like this. Hmm. I don't have one eye power. As in physical strength, I don't get. But you see my mouth so. Hey, this my mouth has done wonders. My mouth has destroyed. I know. But thank God, say God don't forgive me. And he has readjusted that mouth. If I talk for you. Hmm. Part for your skin, Fikomoto. Literally, like, I used to deal with people with my mouth. Yeah, no get power now. So I'll use the one that I can fight. I can use. It is my mouth I used to be able to use. I could. <laughs> I see some people, their mouth, eh, they are sharp like arrow. They will say some things to you, eh. Hey, God. God. Hey. You, <clears throat> you will wonder. You will look at yourself again and check your life. You go check your life inside out. Some people can... <laughs> You need to hear how proud people talk to people. Oh. See you. Look at your life. Now all you did so. And you are claiming that you are a child of God. <laughs> See, they, they have sharpened their tongue. That's the words that they will use. It didn't say knife they could cut you. <laughs> oh my God. It is so, it is like, it's so... It's so scary. I know, I know what the scripture is talking about because I used to use my mouth to do wonders. Yeah. I'll go tell you something so you go. <laughs> hey, God. Oh. See, God really changes people. God really transforms human beings. This is me that even to exclaim funny exclamations or wrong exclamation, I know fits. Like, it's not even a part of me. It has become a part of me that my exclamations now are Bible chapters, Bible verses, Bible stuff, good things, positive things. Like, my tongue used to be so well sharpened. I give it to you. I serve you hot. Like that. But God has tamed this tongue of mine. And now I use it to build and not destroy. It says, the power of the tongue. You can use it to build. You can use it to destroy. The tongue has a lot of power. And it didn't say that the Christian's tongue. It just says the words of the mouth are power. They can give life or they can kill. They can build or they can destroy. So anybody, the way you use your tongue is very, very serious. It's very, very serious. It says... um. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who has purposed to overthrow my goings and my coming. We really need to pray to God to preserve us from this kind of people. Because there are some people that are just following you. They are monitoring you like monitoring spirits just to overthrow you. But they would, they would, they will monitor you and then eh, we are praying that they will get saved. They will be grabbed. They will be, they will be arrested by the Holy Ghost and they will be saved. They were following you to deal with you. They are following you to overthrow you. They were following you to do some crazy things to you. They will be arrested by the Holy Ghost. We need to pray. Oh, because these people exist. We need to pray. Because the truth is, these people really do exist. The people that are just sitting there. 
and waiting for you to fall. Some are even planning on how to strategize and make you fall. Oh, yes. That's what some people are doing. So we need to pray. Oh, let God deal with them. It says, um, the proud have hid a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set jeans for me. Mom, mom, mom love says she read it in a different version. So let me try to see it on Amplify. The proud have hidden a snare for me. They have spread cords as a nest by the wayside. They have set traps for me. Pause and calmly think of that. Of course. So let's pause and think about it. There are people. Have we not seen? Even movies have shown us. But in real life, we've seen those things. Where some people will go and set up pastors. Those are the traps that they're talking about. You're a child of God. You're a servant of God. You're serving the church. And then this lady comes to you and is trying to seduce you. And you're not, in, you're not giving in to her seduction. And then she frames you up. They've done it to many people. I'll never forget that movie, The Price. That was one of the first movies where I saw how they, are, how they, how they blackmail pastors, right? That was one of the first movies that I saw it on. Like the movie was ringing, it was raining at the time that it just came out. The Price. Oh, one pastor suffered persecution. Oh, he suffered very well because of this blackmail so people can just blackmail you. Somebody can just come out from one kind of place and bring one story that never existed. Just to get you in trouble. People do that all the time. <laughs> oh, welcome. My daddy is in the building. Welcome, daddy. Commando. He says, he says, don't be afraid of them who are witches and wizards. <laughs> and yes, Pastor Ken, he was the one. He suffered persecution. So yes, that's why they're telling us, pause and think about it calmly. So we need to pray that God should deal with these people. God should handle these people so that they don't get the best of us. Sometimes some of those, their plans might even go through. They will go through. But in the end, God will glorify himself through those things. Like, I remember the man who was giving his testimony sometime. I watched his testimony and he was testifying that because of what he did to one man, the man lost his job. His wife left him because of that scenario. And then... The man got, I think he got an accident or something. Then they locked him up in prison because the company that they stole the things from, it was so big, so they had to lock him up and stuff like that. I mean, a whole lot of crazy things happened to that man because of one guy's single act of theft that he did and he was just trying to revenge on something. When the man who stole the things, repented god told him to go and restitute restitution was that he had to buy those things back and he had to tell the man that he was the one who stole it oh my god oh my god it was it was like imagine that tw tw was it 20 years after or 30 years after it's like your whole life has been ruined by one person's single act of foolishness out of revenge and then the person is coming to tell you sorry there are some people in your life that are waiting just for that moment that you feel like that and then they'll be like, hey, you, you call yourself a child of God. See what is happening to you. Oh, yeah, that you're a child of God. You don't become wahala free. Oh. The Bible says offenses will come. It's not that they might come. The Bible does not say might. When it says might, it means there's a possibility. It might come, it might not come. It will come. It's a matter of when. Wahala go kamo. It's just a matter of when. He did not say it will not come. Oh, he did not say it might come. He says when. But woe to the offenders. But you know. So those things will happen. My daddy says. Always remember that. He who is in us is greater than them. Oh yes. That's our victory. That's our confidence. That's our assurance. That the God who is in us is greater than them. So regardless of what they plan, regardless of what they do, if you're still in right standing with God, I can promise you without any iota of doubt that it will work for your good. It will work for your good. Let them give it their best shot. Let them do their worst. Ask Joseph. He will tell you, hey, say as long as you are in right standing with God, let them do their worst. Let them even make you run naked. Because you want to not do stupidness to God. 
it will work out for your good. It took just hours in a day. It was not up to 24 hours. It was not up to two hours. It was not up to one hour. It just took a single decree. That was like split second. Someone who had been a prisoner and a slave all their lives was now the second in command in a whole nation, one of the greatest nations of those times. That's God for you. So child of God, do not fret. These people can do whatever they want to do. They can plan whatever they want to do. They can set traps for you. But as long as you are in right standing with God, that they are trapped and all, you know, will get you. I be no, I be don't. Oh yes, oh yes. People would set traps against you. People would lie against you. People would give false report against you. I mean, people would do crazy stuff just to see you fail. Not because you did anything bad to them all. You see Pharisees and Sadducees, what did Jesus do to them? Nothing. They were preaching the undiluted, they were preaching the diluted version of the word of God. And then Jesus just came quietly and started preaching the undiluted. If me at this sick, I see hospital, I know in the hospital, I won't go there, no. It's not somebody that will come and convince me. I'll not come, I'll not leave the hospital now and be going to the library. Maybe before they have been telling me that there's solution at the library. I'm sick. They're telling me that there's solution at the library. There's solution at the library. So I've been going to the library. But I'm not really getting the solution. Then finally, hospital can't open for corner my house. I see hospital. You think so I will go to the library? I know say now hospital I need now. I was just managing library because they said there's one small solution there. Maybe there is some small quack doctor in the, in the library that is doing some small, small things that he can do. But now a real hospital has opened in front of my house. Would they have to convince me to go to the hospital and not go to the um, quack library where there's the quack doctor? Of course not. That's how the people just started following Jesus. You wonder what they were following Jesus for. That for three days they are not eating. They were still following. Like sheep without sheep. <laughs> when you know what you need, when you know where the solution is, you go go there. So some people will just naturally hate you because you're fulfilling purpose. You're doing what God called you to do. And so they'll start planning evil against you. The Pharisees, they were planning. They were perming Jesus. They were waiting for him to just make mistakes. Then let them hang him up. Let them hook him. And my daddy says, we need discernment these days. Oh, yes. We need discernment. It's, and it's no jokes. We need discernment these days because there are lots and lots of false prophets. It says in the last days, a lot of false prophets will arise and they'll be saying things that God did not tell them, but they will say that God told them. You know the young and the old prophet scenario. The old prophet came and said, God said, God not talk nothing. You know. He was lying. It says, um, a woman's testimony I heard came to Brazil and carried drugs, not knowing what it was, but sent by a so sent by sent by a so-called sister in her church and she ended up spending six years in prison jesus so watch out there are many of them in church in church so-called today i'm telling you it's you have to really be discerning and you really have to be connected to god if you will not fall for the pranks and the craziness and the traps that these people are setting for us because it will be so real See some innocent person now coming to spend six years in prison for something they know nothing about, for something they are clueless about. But it's another so claimed sister, in quotes. It's not everybody who calls Lord, Lord, that will enter the kingdom of God. Though. The Bible has told us that, that some people will come and say, um, some people will come and say, we cast out demons in your name. And he'll say, depart from me, I know you not. We read a certain scripture somewhere. It was a message that we listened to. And God was saying that he's not answering the prayers. That when these witches and wizards are praying and people are in the, in the church, in the congregation, he's not answering the prayers because he's leaving the witches and wizards their power to work. He's answering because he's seen the hard situation of the people. He is answering. So if I'm in the church and the person that is preaching over me is a witch or is a whatever, he has going to carry his powers from whatever. 
God is not answering the prayer because he's honoring the witch doctor. He has seen my heart that is drawn to him and is desiring an answer of my prayer. So he's answering me. Gone are those days where we used to think that those people are the ones performing those miracles. Lila to Lila. When you go to the Ababa shrine now and go and collect miracle, they are, you think that that's a miracle. That's when now that one affects you negatively. But that you're in the church and you're having a clean heart and a clear conscience and they say pray unto God. Let God answer your prayers. Let him give you the desires of your heart. You're really praying honestly to God and you're asking for some things that you desire. God is going to give you. He's going to bypass that crazy person that is standing on the pulpit and give you what you're asking him for. And is that not why we're singing every day? We're doing a chapter a day here because we want you to have a personal relationship with God. We want you to see the promises that God has for you in stock in the, in the Bible. It's for your good. Whether you study the word of God, you don't study. You're not making God more God or less God. God will not be more God because you're studying the Bible. He's God. It's for your good. And he will not be less God because you're not studying the Bible. It's for your good. And if you don't study it, it's your loss. Because it's only in this love letter that you can find out what God has in store for you. And then you hold on to those promises and then you begin to see them manifesting in your life. Oh, mom love Angela now says, I now get it. Oh, thank God. Thank God that you got it. Says, the old prophet said an angel spoke. Meanwhile, God spoke to the prophet. Oh my God. I, you see, that's the part. Sometimes, uh, uh, um will prefer to do what the man of God says as opposed to what God has said to us. What has God said to you? And sometimes God will speak to us expressly clearly in the place of prayer. It was already, first of all, a red flag. It was supposed to have been a red flag that God moved you, the young prophet, from your own town and brought you to another town where a prophet is there. Don't you think that there's a problem somewhere? Don't you think there's a problem somewhere? I feel so sorry for that young prophet. But there are just some of those kinds of mistakes that we make. And if you don't have the spirit of discernment, you will fall for that same thing that he did. Since an angel of the Lord said that you should come back and come and eat. Ay. And then he went and ate. And then when they told him, I'm sure that's when now he knew that something was wrong. And then he thought that the man was fake. And then thought that maybe what the man was saying that a lion was going to eat him was fake. That was when now it was real. Oh my God, because I've seen a lot of people in the Bible who messed up and made mistakes. And then when they decree and declare what was going to happen to them, they say, Lord, have mercy, have mercy. Like David, he'll cry out and say, Lord, have mercy. Your son has done it again with a sum of 1 million. Just forgive this, your son. No, oh, it's stupidity, it's foolishness. He'll just like that. He will not justify you. You see, Ogaso, Ogaso would say, I did it because the people did this. And then I thought that. And then yam done, yam no done. He will use all kinds of things to justify why he did. David, he did just lie down flat. Papa God, I've done it again. Your servant is here. I beg you, forgive me. Oh yeah. Some of us do we do. We would find everything to justify the stupidity that we have done. Instead of asking God to give us the spirit of discernment to be able to know that this thing, no. This is not me saying. This is not me showing. But how will we know the difference when we're not even studying the word of God? How will we know that this man is lying at this point in time? Some people started well. Oh. They started well. But along the line, they missed it. But now, because of the way our minds have been conditioned, and because we don't want to study the word of God together to, by ourselves, because we don't want to study the word of God and have a relationship with God. So now, when these people are saying these things that they are saying, we are believing them based from where they started. So these people came, when they started, they started well. So all that they have been doing has been working. It has been backed by God and everything. But now they've derailed. They've disconnected from God and they're talking self. They're talking flesh. Some of them have even as much as gone to Baba Allah to go and get powers. You know, like that. We don't see now that they are derailed because we have not been studying the word for ourselves. We have just been taken from them. So we believe that they are still on track. But when you study the Bible, you know that no, this man has missed it at this point. And says, Mom Love Angela says, Princess, a friend in Kenya got a house help through a reference in a new church she went to. These were ritualists, and before she knew it, her only son 
Her only son was bewitched. Oh my God. She recently shared her testimony live. See, hmm. these days we are in, child of God, if you don't have a relationship with God, you are just a goner. I say that sometimes even us who have the spirit of God, even us who are loving God, who are studying the scriptures, it's not funny. Oh. Sometimes it's not funny. Sometimes you might even almost a little bit miss it before you catch yourself. Then imagine people who don't even know God at all. How are they coping? How are they coping in this generation? It is fear me. How are they coping? I said, these people are everywhere. They are setting traps. They don't want children of God to prosper. You think the devil will sit and be watching you and giving you a red carpet reception as you are entering heaven after you've left his camp? We will be done rock the world. You think he's excited that I'm now here preaching the gospel? I lie, lie to lie, lie. He will find anywhere, any means to deal with you. He will find anywhere and any means. Sometimes you don't only be waiting and thinking that he will use only you. Ah, when he sees that he cannot get through to you, he will use people around you. You are mad at your sister. You are mad at your brother. You are mad at your father or your mother. <laughs> they target now you. <laughs> if Job decided to be mad at his at his wife, be mad at his friends, instead of focusing him on God, eh? Two a day before do here. <laughs> If a wash body, you no. Know. If Joseph decided to be grumbling about all the very wrong things that people had done to him and how he had his rights, by all means, humanly speaking, he had a right to be angry. Because these people really did him bad. They really did him wrong. But no, he just kept doing his thing. I mean, as seen, life continued like nothing happened. He was still being excellent at anything that he was giving. The little that he was giving, he was being excellent at it until everywhere he went now, the spirit of excellence was just with him so much so that everybody could see it. Even the warder, even the big guard in the, in the, in the prison gave him a bigger position in the prison just because they saw how diligent this boy was. He could have sat there and be grumbling about how things are not working, how they sold him from his father's house, how God had already told him that he was going to lead until lead even his father and his mother and then see where he is right now. Ha! It is well. Studying the word of God wasn't something for us where we were brought up, being taught how. I asked my siblings to bring Bibles for my sons this trip instead of junk from Americana. <laughs> This time, the boys now understand why I did that because I think that's more important than all those swags and all. I'm telling you, my sister, by all means, if you want to swag, by all means, swag. Make the swag one can way Bible at the if you can swag, if it's possible for you, you can swag, swag, but make the swag one day with Jesus day because eh, when they will go and deal with you, <laughs> swag not gonna save you. <laughs> Now the word of God will carry go save you. Because when even Jesus himself finished his 40 days and 40 nights, came out the first person he met up and a devil. Hmm. You'll be thinking he would have come and then he would just be powerful and start doing here and then a devil he meet up first. Immediately after 40 days of fasting and prayers, Jesus, the savior of the world, the first man he meet up and a devil. So you feel that you are Yahoo. Like, how can I just finish my fasting and prayer? And then is this Wala? Who sent this one? Hey, my sister, carry word of God where you study for the prayer and fasting for the 40 days. So begin to use and quiet, quiet, because that's what Jesus used. <laughs> it is the word of God. It is the word of God. Anyway, so let's go. Verse, um, we're on verse six, right? I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, hear the voice of my supplication, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. God is our protector. God is our keeper. He has kept us. He has saved us. He has delivered us. See, there are seen and unseen battles that God gets to fight for us that if, we, if He could open our eyes so we see. <laughs> hey. We're not going to take this sleep and rest and giving his beloved sleep and fighting our sin and unseen battles like play like play oh will not take it for a joke because it's not even a joke it's not even a joking matter brethren hey it is well god is 
my salvation. Salvation is only through Christ, though. There's no other way. See, being moral, being good, is not good enough. Cornelius for qualify. But he didn't qualify until they had to give a Philip experience for him to be saved. To really accept Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior like he was needed. So not be about being moral. Not be about doing good. Though. Yeah. Yeah. The sin nature is in us. For that nature to come out is only by Jesus. Two way no day. Conshot no day. Now, the, now only for Tata for straight road. Now through Jesus. If you are not at any point in your any point in time in your life accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you never qualify. Let no man deceive you. Yeah. You get as it be. If Cornelius was doing all the good things that he was doing, the sacrifice of his offering was smelling and going up to heaven all the time. Mm -hmm. God still say, my son, my son, mm -hmm. you can't do the need for ya. I don't smell your offering. It's really coming and it's good and it's everything. But this offering, so, mm -hmm. the full acceptance will come now when eh, you have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So it's not a joking matter. It's not a joke at all. Verse 8, grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked, further not his wicked desire, devise, lest they exalt themselves. Hey, <laughs> like when I read this scripture where um, Jesus was talking to, I don't know who he was talking to, but I think he was talking about to the gardener or somebody. He was talking to somebody and then he says, oh, the tears, they came and realized that they tears have been planted amongst the wheat and then he was like oh this is not a good thing and then the man asked him should i now uproot the tears so that they should not grow amongst it? he said no 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 of root and now the thing is that uh, in church uh, a lot of people look like christians so in church there is mixed multitude there are the tears and there are also the wheat so don't just come to church and feel that everybody in church is wheat like a uh, the way you go suffer, you go wonder whether God really loves you or not. And just like my daddy said, we need the spirit of discernment. Because it's true discernment that you know the one that is real and the one that is fake. You know the one that just came. And the one that is really, really solid. You will know. Because God will tell you. See how God always shows his things beforehand. He will show you. He will show you. Say they will be so proud, they will blast you, they will say some kinds of crazy things. But just like David, when God showed David the end of the wicked, he started feeling sorry for them instead. You will start praying for them. You will start begging God for their salvation. You will start calling on God that God should save them. He says, no, we should not move those stairs right now because there might be a mistake, you might uproot a wheat. Oh yeah, I've been to the farm before. I've done some farming things before. Not so much, but a little bit. That sometimes you're thinking you want to uproot grass and then you cut the corn. Like there's corn by it and then you mistakenly pull the corn out. So God said, no, 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 no. We don't move there now. It's time. The time is coming. We'll deal with them. Everybody will get their reward diligently. They'll get their reward diligently. They might be looking like, oh, everything is moving for them. They're enjoying their life. They're living their best life. Eh? They will have their due reward in time. They'll be bragging. You say you're a child of God. Look at me. Me, I'm having my this. I'm having my that. I'm having my that. What do you have? Some of those things, they'll get to you. You're a human being. But God has promised you what he's about to do for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it gotten to the heart of man. Hey! My daughter, my sister, my brother, my son, my uncle, my auntie, my father, my mother. See, stay connected to God, eh? The glory that is set before you, just focus on it. And enjoy your small cross. Carry it quiet, quiet, and be going, you. Jesus. For the glory that was set before him endured the cross. You know the glory that is set before you, right? You know living eternity with God in heaven, right? So enjoy your cross, small, small, and let's be going. It says, As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Oh, oh, 
Sometimes these people will plan those their things. She is see Modekaya and Herman. Herman prepared everything. I prepare everything. Backfire. Now he finally suffered all the things that we prepared for Herman. He finally suffered everything he prepared for Modekaya. Modekaya enjoyed everything that he prepared for himself. No worry. Time for swap the calm. <laughs> no worry. Time for reward the calm. God will reward everybody diligently. Just focus on where God wants you to focus. Focus on where God wants you to focus. And it says, um, Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into the deep pit, that they rise not up again. Uh, he was giving his own suggestion of what he wants let God do to the people. It's at God's discretion. He's sovereign. He might use that technique. He might use another. God is God. Sometimes you just need to give the suggestions and leave it there. <laughs> but no fight with God, though. Don't insist on your matter. Don't insist on your way. Let God do his ways. His ways are perfect. His ways are past finding. The foolishness of God is wiser than the wisest of men on planet earth. So trust God. Trust his judgment. The one who was in time past is now and is already in the future. He's limitless. He's not constrained by time. He, in eternity took a chunk of eternity and gave us, squashed it in the form of time and gave it to us. He's not limited by that. It's an eternity past and eternity future. That's the God we serve. Why would you not hand over your life to him now? He knows the end from the beginning. Hey. It says, let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall haunt the valiant man to overthrow him. His plan is evil. The evil will affect by him. It will not affect you. They shall surely gather, but if they are not gathering for your sake, they will fall. It is clear. It is the love letter that God has given to you. That's where we find it. If you are not reading you that love letter and looking at it every day, every day, every day, are you sabi? You don't know the God don't talk concerning you. You don't know the nice things that he has said to you. You don't know the nice things that he's about to do for you. You don't know the things that he has promised to do to the people that want to give you trouble, that want to hurt you. You will not know. But if you're studying the word diligently, you will know. It says, I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. Of course, when you dwell in the presence of the Lord, when you stay in the presence of God, thanksgiving is something that you need to learn. May the good Lord give us a heart of gratitude. To always be grateful. Sometimes some of us, we are so entitled that God has done a whole lot for us. We're not seeing it. We're only seeing the things that he has not done yet. It's not that he will not do. He has not done yet because it's not yet time. Now the one thing that we don't go through skin for day would be grumble. We are so ungrateful about it. Hey, yeah. Children of God. Can we sit and look back and count our blessings and be naming them one by one so that we'll be shocked at what god has done god says the plan for her for you plans of good and not of evil plan to get you to an expected end should that alone not make you comfortable should that alone not make you confident that you know that god's plans for you are good not evil and he wants to take you to an expected end you should trust god this God, eh, is a good God. He's a miracle, Baba. So don't joke with him. Let God give you an attitude of gratitude. A heart that is grateful. A heart that can be thankful. A heart that can appreciate him. Let God give it to you. Let God give you that. Child of God. Anyways. That's what we have for today on the chapter today. Psalms 140. It had 13 verses and we just got to the end of it today if you have any more suggestions or any more things that you learned from here the the holy spirit drops it on your heart or drops it in your spirit please put it in the comment section don't don't feel restrained there might be something there that god wants me to learn or he wants people in my audience to learn and they will not be able to learn it if you don't put it down maybe you write it or you decide to come live we always say that you can request to come live you come live and you teach the people that's what we desire be a blessing to the people. You have been blessed by the word of God. You've been blessed by God. Bless others. 
don't get blessing constipated share what you have so that new ones will come in better ones will come in and mom love angela says there are so many doctrines out there even by some religions gatherings to say all is that to say all is that you get to god be it be it through Muhammad, etc., that Jesus is not the only way to the Lord, and that the Trinity is just another doctrine. In a nutshell, the world needs a new Bible, says the Interdenominational Council. I'm simply scared. Hmm. Oh, man of God, you've not even seen things to be scared about. I I saw, was it a video, a documentary, or something somewhere? They were preaching a certain gospel about... I was like, are these people for real? I remember one time my dad also saw a video that some two people were preaching naked. That that's what the Holy Spirit has told them. Oh, did they say the Holy Spirit? I don't know. Or they said God. That God had told them to do like that. A man and a woman who stuck naked. They were walking around in the village and preaching gospel. And they carried their child. They carried the child on the back. Something like that. I could not even watch. I could not even. It, it was so. It, it was just crazy. I could not even watch it. I could not watch it. Like, as I just put it on and I saw that the people were really, truly naked, I could not even watch it. Someone said they were preaching the gospel. I'm like, may the good Lord help us with what is happening in this generation. And of course, if you're not studying the Bible, you'll not know that all those things are false. You'll not know that all those things are crazy. You'll not know that people can come and claim that they're coming in God's name, but they're not in God's name. It's not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, that will enter the kingdom of God. It's not everybody who casted out demons in his name. It's not anybody who healed the sick in his name shall enter the kingdom of God. We already know that. And how would you know that if you're studying the word of God? But if you're not studying the word of God, you will not know. So you think all these things are real. If you're not studying the word of God, it will not make sense to you that a man of God will tell you that he should walk on you. A pregnant woman, you should lie down, he should walk on you so that your baby should be anointed. You will not do that kind of nonsense. That he should shave your private part in public, in church, and you are allowing him. No, you wouldn't do that kind of rubbish. Because you have studied the word and you know what God can do and what he cannot do. So even if you revere that man of God, even if you respect that man of God, there are some things that he will say that you wouldn't do because you know what the word of God says concerning those things. Like how on earth, how on earth can we be so gullible? But the Bible says that in the last days, people will also have itchy ears and they will hear what they want to hear. He will give them people that will say to them things that they want to hear. So it's still scripture that is fulfilling, like I said. There are some people that will fulfill the negative aspects of scriptures, but it's not going to be me. God forbid. Minus moi. It ain't going to be me fulfilling the wrong side of scripture. I'm going to be fulfilling the good parts. Okay? <laughs> so this is where we're wrapping up with the chapter today for today. And I hope that you had a great time together. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Get to also follow us on all our social media platforms and read the Bible. We have our audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Instagram is the newest of them all. We started with the New Testament. So please, you have no excuse as to why you're not growing your faith. You're not studying the word of God. You can read them one chapter a day. It's up to you. You can, you can do two chapters, three chapters, but it's called a chapter a day. So you can do a chapter for a day and then you get to just engross yourself in it and then get to study we also have the bible study on youtube as well so if you're a person who is not on facebook because there are a lot of people that are not on facebook you can also get it on youtube we're looking forward to be able to put it all over like if there comes a time where it's possible for us to put the bible study on instagram we'll put it there on linkedin we'll put it there we're putting it all over if these people are crazy about sensationalizing every place and spreading sexuality and all those things all over the place we are also intentional about spreading the gospel everywhere if there is any social media platform we can put it on there we are going to put it on there let's do this together so when you love you like it share 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 so people in your audience can also get here there might be someone in your audience that needs to tell me something but i won't get it until you share this video you might be saying, well, I can also go and sit on my Facebook page now and preach like Princess is preaching. Indirectly, sharing this video is doing that. Souls that get won in your audience through listening to this, you are credited for that. Hmm? 
So let's go, guys. Today we're going to be praying that God is going to help us to be able to discern and know who is who, what is what, and when he's speaking and when he's not the one talking. Because yes, we're in the days where there are lots and lots of false prophets. Some of them didn't start a false prophet. They started right, but along the line, they got derailed, they got carried away. Judas didn't start like a thief. If not, Jesus would not have chosen a thief outrightly and put in his circle to be using. Along the line, he missed it. Even when God was technically trying to call him out, he still didn't listen. He had gone too far to turn back. Unfortunately for him, he committed suicide. He had repented, restituted even, but the guilt could not let him. And that's why God doesn't even want you to get to that guilt part. You might not be a, you might not be a Peter. You might be a Judah. Think about it. So if God says don't do, don't do. He's wanting you to avoid that guilt that can help you, that can push you to go and kill yourself. May God help us in Jesus' name. Father, we come before your throne of grace, O oh Lord. We cry out to you, Lord. Help us, O oh God, to be able to discern. Release upon us the spirit of discernment. To be able to know what and who to do, what the time. Lord, that will not miss the hour of our visitation. As much as we will not also miss doing the things that you want us to do, the way you want us to do it, and how you want us to do it, and when you want us to do it, and for whom you want us to do it, O oh God, and for what reason you want us to do it, O oh God. Father, we'll be able to discern that our antennas are going to be very, very alert and very very active, oh God, to pick every signal that you're giving us, especially in these last days that we're in, oh Lord. Father, it's not funny, but we know that with you on our side, we are victorious. We know that with you on our side, we are going to battle with the victor's mindset, knowing that we've won already because you did it for us 2,000 years ago on the cross. So we know that the devil has been defeated. We just have to go and take our trophy. We just have to go and take that which you've already won for us. Lord, help us to be able to discern so that we're going to know what you want us to do, what you have us do, per time and per season. We're grateful, Lord, because we know when we come to you and cry out, you always hear and answer us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Hey, everyone. Today is Psalm 140. 40. So tomorrow is going to be Psalm 141. And I've told us, I'm hyping, hyping, hyping about Psalms 150, whenever it's going to be. Guys, don't miss it for nothing in this world. We are going to have something special and spectacular, which God is preparing for each and every one of us. I'm totally and completely excited. I just can't wait. I hope you too. Please, it's not just me hyping the thing, but it's going to be awesome. So please don't miss out. But tomorrow is Psalm 141. Don't forget to be here. By the grace of God, if Jesus starts to come, like if he doesn't come this night or the next minute <laughs> or the next hours, <laughs> then we'll be here again tomorrow by his grace. Same time to have a swell time together on the Bible party. It's always your favorite baby girl, Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> on a chapter a day, aka a card for short. Don't forget to listen to the Bible and grow your faith. We really, really do love you. Father, we thank you for another amazing session that you've brought us through, oh God. We are grateful because you always empower us. You always do awesome things through us, with us, for us, and around us. All for your glory. Father, we pray, oh God, that your word that has come to us today, oh God, we should not just be hearers, oh God, but we should be doers of the word because lots and lots of blessings come in doing the word. Father, we want to be living epistles read of men. Let our whole lives be an expression of your grace, your mercy, your love, your power, and you. Let us be able to reveal you through our lives. We want to be living epistles read of men. Because there are some people that will never ever read the Bible, but our lives will be the only Bible they can read. So Lord, help us to be able to live the life that people will truly see us and see these ones have been with Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering us. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a ginormous amen, amen, and amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Je vous aime. God bless. See ya.